Greetings from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Working here for a few days. Historic hotel room. I had to run through my gear for this job. Pretty consistently the last couple of years, I have a, a, a show and then a few reoccurring annual corporate conference related projects that I shoot in the first half of the year that are the, the same dynamic, which is a uh, interviews and B-roll, essentially, kind of that like two minute package format that's interview driven. And uh, we usually shoot a story in like one to three days. So um, let's see, on this one, I have, uh, well, the total package here is five Pelicans, and then I carried on all the batteries in a backpack. Two of the Pelicans are not in my room. They're in uh, the producer's room, which is the drone, which the producer is flying. And then, uh, what's the other case? Oh, uh, I have another Pelican, same air, same size, that's got the tripod and some light stands and a battery charger. So each of these cases comes in at between 45 and 50 pounds. So they're all normal luggage. Three of us flew, so we each had two check bags. So I didn't have to use my uh, media baggage right on this one. We saved a little bit of money. My first is my carry-on. And I want to say this, I just got these new batteries, these things. I just use these on a, a show, which convinced me to buy them for myself. The Hypercore 98 watt hour. I think I'm getting an hour and 20 minutes on the Amira. I don't understand how the math works, but uh, 65 watt camera, 98 watt hour battery, hour and a half. Um, I hope it continues even after the batteries have aged a bit. But I got four of these, and then I got four of my... Omer 90s, 95s. These only run the Amira for about 40 minutes. I think I'm overloading the cells. They can't really, they don't manage that high capacity draw well. Uh, so I'm going to use these for monitors and lights. First Pelican, least sexy. This has got uh, my USB charger for USB lights and bits. Got a couple stands in the bottom, a few uh, 5 in 1 reflectors. Set of headphones, a uh, director monitor, spare pair of shoes, and all my um, personal items traveled in this case. This is my lightest case in the batch. And then next up is my interview light kit. We got four Lowell stands, which are my favorite for airline travel, XLR cables, AC power supply for the camera, some lighting and a uh, hole holder. And then I've got two LED panels in that bag. And then I have two mini self-powered LED lights in my carry-on bag. And case number three is my two cameras for this project. See this, um, just saw this discussion flare up on a Facebook user group about do you fly or check your cameras? And uh, I'll tell you, when I was a newbie, I carried on my camera and lenses because um, that's what I thought was the right thing to do. And that works really well up to the point where until you get to the airport late or you have a lower boarding number and you run out of overhead bin space and now you're stuck with like a carry-on backpack style bag full of camera and lenses that you're forced to check or not get on the airplane. and. Uh, that almost never works for me to just decline to get on the flight because I can't carry on. And uh, I've had the horror of having to check a soft bag with lenses gate checked and then uh, having that come out the baggage return area all messed up and damaged. So in an effort to prevent that from ever happening and as I'm aging here, I cannot destroy my body carrying on two 50 pound bags, you know, one full of batteries, which is mandatory. And then the other, um, with the fragile bits. And then, you know, that's two bags. You're supposed to only carry on one. And it's a big ask for me to ask my producer or client to carry all my camera kit. I mean, that's my responsibility. Um, so it gets checked. It goes in the belly. Um, this case I would say is minimal protection. Uh, but I haven't, uh, I've flown, I've probably flown, um, I'm doing the math in my head real quick, 24, 60, 80, 
I would say over 80 round trips with uh, the Amira. And uh, so far, so good. I would say uh, at this point, the case, and it's been different cases, but um, based on the Trek Pack or Pelican style, and uh, camera has not been damaged. So we're good there. On this show, I'm just shooting on EF glass for mobility. So I've got a 35 and a 50. And then I got the Black Magic 6K, which we're running on a Ronin gimbal. 24 to 70, and then I also have a, oh, it's in the bag, an 11 to 16 Tokina Zoom. We're going to do some exteriors tomorrow if uh, it stops raining. Wides of buildings, and that'll be on the 11 to 16. Here's my audio package, a little backup Tascam recorder lavalier. You get the Rode Wireless Go lavalier, and a cardioid boom mic. And what is this? This is a spare viewfinder cable for the Amira. Card reader and a screwdriver, hex driver to change out the viewfinder cable. Cards for the Amira. Then I have a second redundant card reader. I think it's in this cell, yeah, down there. ND filters for the Black Magic. Uh, Black Magic power cables. Of course, compact flash cards. One thing I'm really enjoying about the Black Magic, in addition to it matching and quite well with the uh, Ari cameras, and the fact that it's they both shoot ProRes, but uh, they both use the same um, CFast 2.0 cards. So I've got SanDisk cards that are rated and approved for Ari that I also use for my Pocket 6K. Regarding checking gear, so I've worked on some sporting events in years past where we've flown to another city and uh, I think my record was 36 checked Pelican cases uh, at $50 a case times 36, mostly cameras and lenses. So again, like you're not going to carry on 36 cases. I mean, that's just crazy. Anyone in television, or like I said, has been traveling for a number of years, uh, you're not carrying your gear on. It's getting checked. Or better yet, it's getting shipped, FedExed. Um, I actually would have FedExed this stuff to the hotel, and I have better ATA cases for when I ship with a shipper. Um, the reason I didn't is this was, this. both of these cameras were on a job with me, a three-day commercial just before this project, and there would not have been enough of a window to FedEx. And ironically enough, it ends up being, um, when you can keep it to two bags per passenger, it's more cost effective to fly with the gear versus check it. And I have had destinations where um, I get there and my bags don't. And uh, usually it's a routing issue or the plane knows a weight issue and the, the bags follow on the next flight. Uh, so in those cases, I've sat at the airport or just had dinner at the airport. It's anywhere from an hour to three hours of additional wait time. Trying to think all these years, I don't think I've ever had not gone plastic a situation where the gear has uh, been next day. Uh, maybe once actually on the return home. Yeah, and you know what that was? I flew into John Wayne Airport in Orange County and that shuts down at, I think it's 10 p.m. is the last flight. There's flight restrictions into that airport. And I was coming back from San Francisco. The gear was not on my, or some of my cases weren't on my flight that got put on a later flight. Um, no, they just didn't get on a flight because we were the last flight out. That's right. So it came in the next morning, and I just went back to the airport that morning and picked up my bags, and that was on the way home. So lucked out. It didn't cost me. But, um, yeah, that's that. And, I mean, I guess at some point it's going to happen. I'm not going to have gear, and that's what local rental houses are for, or hopefully you're on the ground for more than a day and you get some contingency plans. It's not the end of the world. Something is delayed or damaged. All right, I'll give you another example of a reason not to carry on your camera kit. It's connecting flights. So I had a flight from LA to Atlanta, and we actually flew first class, it was wonderful. But our final destination was the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, and uh, we had a short little regional flight out of Atlanta in Alabama, and that was in one of those little regional jets that's got the like minuscule overhead slot. It doesn't even have a door. And uh, even my, even this size backpack would not have fit in the overhead 
um, and even jammed under the seat, I think it sticks out a little bit. So that would have been a gate check if I had a camera bag for the regional flight. So that's another reason I want to have the gear in a checkable case, because even if my big plane, my, it fits in the 737, it may not fit in the little regional hop connecting flight. All right, I've been at it since uh, 4.30 this morning, and it is now 9.40, but that's Eastern 987, so that's 6.40 local for me. Uh, I'm going to call it a day, and we'll call it a wrap on this video. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below.